So, um, I've heard kind of a, a lot of groups will be deep down. They're looking for this idea of consciousness when they're doing some form of brain mapping. Right. Um, but I've heard a lot of groups, Ed Boyd in, in particular re will repeatedly say that his goal is to find consciousness, but he doesn't think that we're there yet. He thinks that we need to develop more tools in order to be able to, to get to that point. Um, so what what camps are you guys in? Is it more that you have kind of a rough idea of consciousness? Is it somewhere that you think we have no idea, we need to have a better understanding of the mapping? Or do you think it's something that it's more of a philosophical question where you can kind of figure it out with a neural network and a, and a, and a chalkboard? One of the books I read as a kid, I read David Chalmers' book on consciousness. I read Dan Dennett books on consciousness, a bunch of things. And I didn't feel like we were there. Like I didn't feel like there was possible to like have a conclusion that, like I felt like that was just very interesting for thinking, but it didn't lend it to an, any kind of answer. And I'm just not I'm not convinced by the people who say there is no, there's nothing to see here. Basically, it's just a, an illusion of some kind. I'm, I, like I don't I'm not ready to go that far. Um, so yeah, I would say Ed has definitely inspired me, like all of my thinking about neuroscience a lot, and it's pretty similar perspective. Yeah, of sort of let's figure out what the architecture is. Let's figure out what we can measure. Um, try to explain more thought and behavior and like if we still can't figure out consciousness in that setting then you know kind of get more concerned but like i don't know where to go with it right now yeah very happy to say i have no idea <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, there are a lot of I, I, there are a lot of people i really respect who spend a lot of time thinking about this and i will let them keep thinking about it and they can tell me when they have a conclusion that i should act on but uh, until then, I don't, I, I'm, um, I'm pretty into like using, using things that can like directly influence my life or choices. So if there is a reason why this would like influence whatever I picked to do next or something like that, I would think very deeply about it. But until then, I'm going to let Adam and Ed and the Qualia guys or uh, EAs think about it and they can tell me what their, their results are. <laughs> I do think a lot of these things are bo sort of bottlenecked, like the exploration of this could be bottlenecked in some ways by sort of these types of problems and including fro problems, but just tools generally. I mean, inducing very specific states and perturbations of consciousness that aren't just kind of what we get day to day with molecules or gene therapies or ultrasound or other kinds of things. It's something we can't really do very precisely and safely now. Um, so you could say we're kind of very... We're kind of just going on a one track, <laughs> normal human consciousness. <laughs> um, it's very hard to experiment on this. And yeah. um, Do you think there could be kind of shortcuts or, or little things along the way that would help? Like, I mean, the kind of basic physics example is like you don't need the standard model to figure out a lead lead collision. You don't need to understand consciousness to make a brain machine interface. Um, and do you think you can kind of reach similar end goals without actually having a complete theory of consciousness, which would be something that would be very complicated? Probably, yeah. Although it's going to get weird. <laughs> right? Like, you know, like, if you have really great AI or brain-inspired AI or really powerful brain interfaces, like, it does get a little weird to not have any answer. <laughs> you know? Right? I have seen enough Star Trek to have an opinion on this. <laughs> I think you can do those things and then you just be like, wow, we don't have an answer. <laughs> like, this is bad. <laughs> Um, so another thing that uh, I thought was interesting about what you said, Anastasia, is that um, you wanted to have an answer so that it would impact your life, but you're also talking about effective altruism groups. So I feel like a, a theory of consciousness would be directly applicable to something like effective altruism because you would have, say, it's very hard to make decisions when you're not able to know what is and what is not conscious. And so you're not really able to be effectively altruistic in that case. So does that kind of change your mind about spark notes of, of consciousness? Or? I think that I would happily like take a sp spark notes of consciousness. I don't think anyone has like enough of an understanding or like a high enough credence in it yeah. to like influence direction. I do think that like one of the things that is useful about startups is that people have different specialties and expertise and not everyone has to do everything. You do a little more of everything than you would at like a huge company, but like, mm -hmm. Um, I like to build organizations and I like to see like what I'm very excited about bringing technologies into the world and trying to make impactful 
differentially good technologies. I know lots of philosophers who spend a lot of time thinking about consciousness. I'm very happy to introduce you to them. Um, but I'm like happy to like separate those roles and like take their advice, but not have to do it myself and focus on um, like the FRO piece. And in your experience, a lot of these philosophers, are they talking a lot or are they are they acting a lot? I think that, that there is something that, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that like EA does a very good job of thinking through downside risks and considering outside of opinions, um, also doing a lot of thinking. Uh, that being said, they've created a very large movement that like, you talked about existential risk. So while I maybe sometimes will criticize EA for not taking enough actions, the fact that you know about existential risk, I actually like think that like Toby Ord or Will McCaskill has done a lot of work there to make sure that you knew about it. And um, it's not the work I want to do. I'm very glad to be doing other work, but I'm glad that they have done that. Yeah, I think philosophy is actually mega impactful. Yeah. It's like insanely impactful. It's not always obvious, but it's actually like mega impactful in terms of like, why are we sitting here now and all this stuff? Um, and a lot of the current like generation are like super kind of action oriented in a certain sense. It's just consciousness. I think we might be limited by the science part, right? So that's why I'm not reading as many like spending all day reading consciousness philosophy books. Right. Like there's a, there's definitely an alternate world where things like some of the facts on the ground are slightly different. Where I am spending all the my time reading consciousness books because that is actually really important. But yeah, yeah something I, I feel like I've always encountered is that there's definitely a line between a scientific question and a, and a philosophical question and a lot of the times it gets kind of blurry especially now um, and that kind of like how does a brain work how does a person think these are objective answerable questions that if you had like you had some crazy experiment that was able to understand exactly how thought processes work there is an objective truth here whereas if you have something that's like what is right and wrong that's not something that you can just spend enough time on a chalkboard and, and figure it out um, and so i think that's I completely agree with you guys that these philosophical questions are very important, but sometimes you need to understand the science in order to kind of make your philosophy work properly. And that's one of the things I'm excited about. We're in an opportunity to like, we have an opportunity to provide some of that scientific backing. Like there are things that we're considering doing. Like if anyone who's listening has an economics FRO, I'd be really thrilled to figure out how we can build FROs to influence our philosophy or build FROs to influence our policy. Um, I, I think that we have a, a great opportunity here. Actually, sometimes we point to um, Y Combinator did an experiment on universal basic income that was kind of unusually large scale, unusually tightly managed para-academic experiment where they hired serious economists and stuff, but they wanted to organize that outside of academia to kind of do the job operationally in the right incentive structure. And like you could cons perhaps consider that as having been a... Uh, UBI pro to some okay. extent. 